this is Leaf and So Lily Bells. Oh, I've just nudged the camera. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Hi, this is Leaf and So Lily Bells. This is my sewing chat number eight. And it's going to be really, really quick, really, really short. It's just a quick uh, chat about my um, trip to the Festival of Quilts. Um, I went, it was at Birmingham NEC. I went on the Friday, um, about a week ago now. And yeah, I had a really, really nice time. It was wonderful to be able to go to that style of event again. So the people that organise the Festival of Quilts, they reduced the amount of people that were allowed to go into the show by something like 40%. And they also hired an extra hall so that all of the stands and exhibitions and workshops and everything was much more spread out and there was more space. Um, so that was good. I, I think it caused them a lot of problems. Um, I was speaking to some of the vendors there and they were saying that um, the show was struggling to make even because they didn't have as many people as they normally have and they had to hire the extra hall. So they were they had to go ahead with the show this year because it was missed last year and they were afraid that if they didn't go again this year it would never start up again. So they did run, I think, they probably broke even but they, they probably didn't make as much money as they normally make at these events but um, I was very happy that they did run it and I could go. <laughs> so I ended up buying a VIP ticket which I've never bought before because you get a separate lounge, you get a separate um, area to go and sit and you guarantee the seat. Um, because normally these events are really, really busy. Uh, obviously this year it wasn't quite so bad, but um, under normal circumstances you can't normally get a seat and things like that. So I bought a VIP ticket and I met some uh, people that I, I know and they were in the VIP area as well. So it just made it easier to, for us to, to meet up if I also had a VIP ticket. And it was great, I've never had it before. So you get, I think it was three free drinks, a free glass of Prosecco, a two course lunch, um, a cloak room so that you can put all your bags and shopping in so you don't have to carry it around with you, um, and just an area to go and sit that was quiet and chilled. Um, and I also got my car parking included in that, so that was very good. I probably would do it again, um, just because it, it was nice and easy compared to some of the shows that I've been to that have been a bit frantic. <laughs> that was nice. Um, the quilts, oh the quilts, you wouldn't believe how wonderful the quilts were. I, I put in some pictures of ones that really sort of struck um, my curiosity and that I really really liked and I'll just put them in here for you to see as I chat and you know I don't think I will ever be able to quilt like <laughs> these ladies and gentlemen did. Oh, it's it's amazing where they get their inspiration and the time that they spend. Even if you have one of the big long arm quilters, it takes so long to do the intricate quilting details that these people have put into these quilts. Um, as you can see, I like the bold, bright, colourful quilts. Um, and I do like them to be an actual quilt, something that you could use. Um, so they are they are truly amazing i didn't do any of the talks or the workshops because the timing didn't work out i was only there for a day and i think it's quite hard to fit everything in but i i got there before the doors opened and i was still there at about i must have still been there at about half five just looking at all the quilts and wandering around so if i'd done a talk or um, one of the workshops I just would not have had time to cover it all. Um, some of the people that I spoke to, everyone's lovely and friendly at these events and as I was walking around looking at the quilts, because I was uh, wandering around on my own, which I don't mind at all, um, I was speaking to various people who were also in groups or walking around on their own and we were discussing the quilts. Um, and also I spoke to people that were in the lounge that I was in and a lot of them had come from multiple days so that they could take advantage of some of the workshops um, that I had on offer and they were really enjoying them because there was a, a wide array of workshops. A lot of them were quilting related but there was printing, there was fabric painting, there was thread painting, 
you know, there was a lot of things that you could do that weren't directly related to quilts, but there was also a lot of quilting classes and workshops, and there's a lot of workshops on colour and how to use colour and things like that, which was great. Uh, Kath Fassett was doing a talk and he was also doing a book signing, but unfortunately I missed him. But I did look at his quilts and his new book that he has out, which is wonderful. I do love his fabrics. His fabrics are gorgeous. I, I'm trying to think if I actually own any. I don't think I do. I've lusted after them for years, but I don't think I've ever owned any. <laughs> I'm going to have to remedy that and buy some. <laughs> um, so that was great. Uh, what else happened? It was just a lovely wonderful day that I could meet some people, have nice conversations and wander around at my own speed doing what I love to do, which is look at beautiful fabrics, look at beautiful quilts and fabric shop. <laughs> so it was great. It was really nice. Um, I did, I did, because this is, is a whole video, so I do have some things to show you. I don't think any of them are quilt related. They're all other sewing related. Um, quilting is definitely an autumn winter activity for me. During the summer I'm really into dressmaking, um, a little bit of cross stitch. Um, during the spring I'm more cross stitch based and during the autumn and winter I am cross stitch and quilt based. I don't know why I just don't feel like quilting in even just doing the patching. I'm not, I'm not a big quilter in the summer so it may come back as we move into winter because I do have two quilts that I have almost finished the tops of that I need to layer and completely finish and they're just folded up in my um, sewing room at the moment because I, I just I'm not in the mood to get them out. I think come winter I'll get them out and finish them and then I'll be done um, and then I'll probably think about starting another one because uh, I do have some nice patterns. I was really looking for two fabrics from quilting while I was there and I couldn't find either of them. I wanted some, is it called fairy frost in white? Because I'm doing a quilt in that and I've run out and it's quite hard to get hold of. I've looked on the internet and stuff and I thought somebody at the show might have it but I couldn't see it. It's quite an old fabric. And I wanted some Kona Midnight and again they had every other colour of Kona but Kona Midnight. Um, so I'm going to have to order that one online. Um, but yes, it was wonderful. I had a great time. Liberty. Actually, I did. I did buy some fabric for quilting. I have just remembered. and I'm going to go and quickly turn this off and come get it, bring it back. There we go. Back again. <laughs> and I, I completely forgot the, the free gifts that they gave me as part of the VIP ticket as well. So I've just picked them up as well. <laughs> so I'll quickly show you those. So these were the gifts that came in the VIP bag. It came in a little tote bag. And it is this book, which is the Foldy Roly Patchwork Pizzazz. I must admit, it's not, not to my taste. I, I, I'm not a big fan of the folded fabric quilts, you know, with the folded cathedral windows and stuff like that. And all of this, is is based on that. Let me just show you some of the pictures. This one's very pretty. I'll show you the back. So there are lots of options in there. Maybe when I put some of my own fabrics to it, it might take my fancy. But um, I can't see myself really doing it anytime soon. But it's there if in the future I decide that I really want to do a folded um, fabric quilt. I have the book now. Um, and they also gave us a selection of fat quarters. So I got the blue colourway but there was lots of other different colourways that were given away and they have planes and clouds and ducks and kites on them. They're, um, they're nice, they're tiny, not rough, What's the best word to use? Not coarse either, but they're not the high density cotton, quilt and cotton. They're a bit more of a looser weave, um, but they're very nice and I will find something to do with them. So that was that. And I also got a little quilting pin badge as well that I've put on my bag. 
um, as part of the VIP gifts. Oh, the rain has just started. Oh, so, so, what's that noise? And it has just started chucking it down. And I've just sent my son to the park to play with his friend with the football. <laughs> I might be interrupted in a minute as he runs back from the park. <laughs> so you better get on. Better get on. So. I think I've, yeah, I've spoken to you, I've told you all about what the crop show was like, what's on offer, yeah. So, actual quilting things that I bought. So they had a big, um, lots of the stores had Liberty on them, but they also had a big Liberty actual um, display area exhibition part where they had quilts on display and the ladies were making it were had like traditional gowns that were in Liberty fabric and I'll put some pictures in here of some of the things that I took photos of on the Liberty store but it kind of inspired me that I probably wouldn't do a full Liberty quilt but I did like the they sort of made art out of the fabric and put it into picture frames to put up on the wall and I will probably do that with these. So these were just little off cuts. They are beautiful Liberty fabrics. They're all lawn. This one's got uh, toucans and uh, I don't know what style of monkey that is. I'm not too sure. But uh, it's got lots of animals on it. And then this one. This one has Dalmatians and Rabbits. This is a really classic one. And this one. And I have a few Liberty um, fabrics myself that I've made dresses and things out of that I can add to this. And I'm going to do some kind of arty uh, paper piece picture with these and put it into a frame to go onto the wall. Um, these were £1 each on one of the Liberty stands, so they had it by the metre or half metre, whatever you wanted to buy. But they also had a big table just piled high with little pieces like this in all of their different fabrics spread across it. And you could just rummage through and pick out the ones that you wanted um, and they were a pound each. And I thought for a few quid I could probably make something nice to go on the wall. So that was probably the only actual quilting related thing that I bought while I was there. But that's that. So now on to the other things that I bought. So I bought these all from one company called Dots and Stripes. I'll link it in the description down below. And all of these except one were from their Remnants bin. So this is just a really nice um, cream jersey, good quality, nice and thick. And I, don't know, I think it was about maybe five pounds for a, a meter. It was in the remnant bin. And then I bought this one, which has little mice and strawberries on. And I kind of thought I'd do them together. It's a sort of a strawberries and cream t-shirt for my daughter. And again, this was just, I think this was about £3.50 for this little remnant. But it will do for like the bands on a t-shirt and the neckband and waistband and things. And then I just bought some plain black because I have some black printed jersey that I wanted something to coordinate with. And again, this is just a nice quality black remnant. I think there's about 75 centimetres here. That's quite wide. So that will do to do some colour blocking with the black that I have. And then I bought a panel. I've never bought a jersey panel before. I've seen them online a number of times and I just couldn't quite visualise how big they were because I kept looking at them going, would I be able to get a t-shirt out of that? Um, but when I saw them in real life, I saw just how large they are. They're very big. You can see. You could easily get um, two t-shirts out of this, I think, because I would do plain backs and then have these on the front. So I've got a sloth, a tropical sloth in pink, and then I have a tropical sloth sleeping in the navy. 
and then I have this coordinating uh, fabric. So I think I will do neckbands and sleeves out of this, like short sleeves, and then these two will be fronts, and I will do coordinating backs, and they will be t-shirts for my daughter. So I need to get all the cutie things in before she goes full-blown teenager on me. And uh, I showed these to her, and I was, I was a bit worried that she might go, oh, I didn't like that. It's, it's too, you know, young and girly. Um, but she, no, she said, oh, I really like that. So um, I got these for her. Put them there. Um, this one I bought from a chap that I, I've never heard of before. He's called Voice Fabrics. And I just liked it because it was unusual. I've not seen anything like this in the shops recently. It is uh, viscous. I bought three meters and it's like an ink blot repeated pattern. It's like a light blue, dark navy and white. I haven't ironed it. I've washed it but I haven't ironed it yet. And it's very pretty. I'm, I keep swearing I have a number of patterns um, that I want to make this into and I can't decide which one yet. I just don't know. I like it. I like it a lot. I just can't decide where I'm going to go with it. I have a fibre fiber mood, I think it's, oh, how do you pronounce it? Dankia? Dankia jumpsuit? Which would look good. Um, and I have a number of summer dress patterns which would also look good because I think it needs to be something flowy. Uh, so I'm not sure, not sure, but I'm sure if we get some hot weather back, inspiration will hit me. So that was that one. And the rest of the things that I bought are all patterns. I have, I have a fabric stash and I kind of thought that I needed some patterns to, to coordinate with all the fabrics that I have. So let's do them in order. I've just realised that I'm missing one. Back again. Sorry about that. Back again. And I just I just searched my whole craft room for a pattern that actually was sat next to me. Never mind. So I'll go through the patterns that I bought. And I was on a real pattern buying spree. So um, So Different had a stand there. And the great thing about So Different is that they make up all of their clothing for you to look at. And you can even try it on. And they make it up in a variety of sizes so that you can see how the different sizes um, suit the pattern and things like that. And they do them in lots of different fabrics. So they may have one item in two completely different fabrics so that you can see the feel of it. Um, so I bought a few from their store. So I bought this one, which is the swing jacket. They had this one made up. And to be honest, if I hadn't seen it made up, I wouldn't have bought it. I, the, I don't think the the picture does it justice. It is lovely in real life. It's unlined. I can't show you the line drawing on the back. And it's just a really nice sort of throw over. So they had it um, They had it in two fabrics. They had it in a heavyweight fabric and a light fabric. And the light fabric would be what I would make it in. And just nice as a little throw on top in the summer. So I bought that one. And then they had these cheaper ones. So this one's, you know, the big um, card with the instructions and the heavy duty paper. But they also had these ones, which were cheaper. And they had a show offer on so that you could buy one of these and two of these for a certain price or three of these for a certain price or mix and match and things. And then you got a, a, a better discount. So um, again, both of these, I don't think I would have bought if I hadn't seen the samples that go with them. So this one, it's a very simple um, sort of dolman grow on sleeve um, top. They had it in the most beautiful silk and it was light and flowy and it was um, colour blocked and it was just really, really nice. So I bought that one. And then this one is a double layered cami and I've been trying to make a cami for a while now and I downloaded a free pattern but 
it was it was cut on the bias and it, it just didn't work out as I thought it would and um, it wasn't the pattern it was all me I, I didn't think I did it right um, so I decided to buy this one and it's double layered um, and I thought I'd give that one a go and the one that they had again was made out of this really nice light and floaty fabric and they had I think it was like a patterned one on the top with a coordinating plane underneath of that one so that was all at the so different stand and if you bought something from this stand they had these card sort of bigger than postcards but card things that you could uh, put to decorate your sewing room so this is the one that i got unfortunately it's backwards for you so i'll put a picture in and then you can read it the right way around <laughs> but it says i will not buy any fabric until i use my fabric um stash at home i said and then i laughed and laughed I did laugh at that. <laughs> so the next two patterns I bought from is the Denim Company. Yeah, Denim. I think it's the Denim Company, not the Denim Fabric Company. Denim Company. And they had some beautiful denims there. Different weights, chambres, all sorts of things. And one of the things that they were showing on their stand is how to use denim for other things than just jeans and shirts. So they had a number of patterns and again they had a number of the patterns made up in their fabric so um i bought two patterns from them i bought this one um which is actually quite similar to a tillion one of the tillion buttons ones that she's released it's a tiered uh dress and it's got little sleeves and multiple tiers and then on the back you've got another option of the tie top and multiple tiers um, it's a variety of fabrics, anything from cotton, chambray, needle cord, viscous, satin, silk, peach skin, and suitable for this. And I just thought it would be quite a nice one just to have in the wardrobe to chuck on uh, in the hot weather. And if I wanted to make it longer into a full length, I could. So that was that one. And this one is a bit of an odd random one because, again, if I had seen this without seeing one made up, I never ever in a million years would have bought this pattern because the envelope art and the envelope, um, the lady dressed in the dress on the envelope, they don't look very good. The, the, the dress looks really, really oversized on her. It's like they just got a massive dress and put it on this woman. But the one that they had on the stand was really nice and fitted and it was out of a really nice lightweight chambre and i looked at it and went i couldn't i couldn't fathom that it was the same pattern <laughs> but here it is so you can see the line art it's quite different for a shirt dress it's like reversed because you've got the buttons at the bottom and she just looks like she's wearing scrubs or something i just don't think this picture does it any justice to sell the pattern there you go. But the one on the stand was, was beautiful, so I bought that one. They also had another one that um, I really liked, but I thought, no, by this point I'd, I'd already spent a bit. And um, it was a tunic that they had, that was a dress, made into a dress. And they'd made it out of this beautiful um, denim and it had a mandarin collar. And it, just, it was just really, really nice. And I do have a pattern that is a tunic with a mandarin collar. And it does make me think that maybe I should make it out of um, like a really lightweight denim and it would look lovely. Oh, and they've done for the uh, the collar and the button placket, it was a patterned flowery denim. And then for the rest, it was just plain denim. I look really nice. So it has given me ideas. Um, and the last thing that I bought, which was at the very end of the day, everybody was leaving. I came across a stall that was selling deer and doe patterns and I have wanted this deer and doe pattern for a very long time and I just thought oh, I'm just going to get it. So it is the, oh, I'm trying to pronounce this now, Fumi, I don't think you pronounce the T, I think it's the Fumier dress, uh, the Fumier skirt, I think, I don't think you pronounce the T in French. Anyway. 
but it's very pretty. I like the zip version. I like the detail on the sides. I have seen a number of these made up. They all look lovely online. Um, I'll show you the back. It does take quite a lot of fabric. It is three meters because it's a full length skirt. Um, and I'm looking forward to making that one. And quite short, so I'm hoping that I might be able to get out of less because I have quite a few two and a half meter cuts of fabric. Because um, for a while, two and a half meters is my go-to length. I have upped it to three meters now. Um, but it would be good to be able to get this out two and a half meters. But I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Have to see how I get on. So that was it for the show. And then, I don't know, I think the floodgates were open because I was in a spendy sort of mood after the show. And I did buy myself two more patterns online. Um, so the first one, well, they're both Soholic patterns. And I just, it's quite difficult to get um, all of the range of the paper versions in the UK. They, you can find shops that have one or two of them. Um, but you definitely cannot find a shop that has a paper copy of this. So I had to buy the PDF copy. And it is the Gabriola dress. Um, not dress. Dress is on the brain. The Gabriola skirt. And if you look at the Pattern Review website, there are people that have made stunning versions of this skirt. I just don't think you can get it in paper anymore. You have to buy a PDF. So um, it's a Canadian company. And you just, they have gone on their website and download it. So that's that one. I'm into a long skirt dress mood at the moment. <laughs> and then I also bought the salt spring dress. So I'm going to make the long length version. And I have a border print, so I'm hoping to do it so that the border print is at the bottom and the rest of it is all plain navy. This is fully lined, so I'm going to have to buy some lining fabric. And the the fabric that I have is it's like a it is polyester satin, but it's a nice quality one. Um, so I think it's going to need to be lined so it doesn't stick and cling and everything. And that's it. That is everything. It's much longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but um, yeah, so no more no more spending for me. This is it. I have enough. So, uh, yeah. So, I met up with a few people at the Festival of Quilts. Um, some of the people that I met up with were people who do sewing um, vlogs as well. So, I met up with Shan from Kitchen to Behaviour, and Rachel from Stitched Up, and Judy. I'm sure she has a vlog, and I'll try and link it down below. But I'll link it down below. Um, and I met up with uh, a lady called Nina and her mum was there and they were lovely and we had uh, tea and coffee and had a good old chat together. Um, and there was Shan's mum Jane there as well. So it was it was lovely to meet these people and uh, spend some time and have a chat and um, yeah, it was really good. It was lovely. Shan and um, Nia and Rachel all were wearing the Lady McElroy Savannah print dresses. Um, and there's, there's quite a few pictures of them on their blogs, um, all, all stood together in the same print of dress but in different styles. So I'll link their vlogs below and uh, you can have a look and uh, uh, look at their recordings from the Festival of Quilts. So I hope you're having a good week and you're doing lots of sewing and making lots of nice clothes and quilts for yourselves. Um, but I will see you next time and uh, take care. Cheerio.